Hi there, my name is Kuda Bear. I've been playing RuneScape on and off for about 16 years now. During that time I've had lots of different kinds of restricted accounts, but I've never played an unrestricted main since 2011. That will change today. My goal is to build my new account to endgame content as fast as possible via routing and macro efficiency. Are you ready to jump in? Let's continue with macro efficient main. All right, all right, there's 50 range. So as you can see, I've been doing a good amount of pest control in between videos, as well as some nightmare zone. And I just wanted to get up to 50 range because there's an upgrade I wanna go for. And let's go ahead and get that now. And that item is actually a magic short bow imbued. It's actually a really powerful item, pretty deceptive for its level at only 50. It's actually much more DPS than even a rune crossbow with broad bolts, which is really surprising, as long as you use the rune arrows, which are really cheap. For general use, I'll be using mithril arrows instead, but they're still really good. It's definitely a really undervalued item, as it kind of feels a little newbie, but it's so powerful. Basically the same thing as a Carl's crossbow in terms of DPS and it can even keep pace with a blowpipe depending on which starts you're using and where exactly you're using it. It's pretty incredible. Generally speaking, this is actually where I'm going to start using range more than magic in quests and anything else I need to kill. This will definitely outpace magic DPS, though I can't say for sure I won't be using magic in a couple upcoming quests either. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and get started with tree runs. Tree runs I find are really important to get started as early as possible. Honestly, I probably should have started even a little bit sooner, but I pretty much just do one uh, each day just to get the farming experience flowing in. It only takes a few minutes and trees are a massive boost to farming experience, so it's definitely worth doing ASAP. All right, here's the last tree patch that I can access for now. Just one tree run a day and that should meet all of the needs we have for farming on this account. It really doesn't take more than that. After I get my farming up a little bit more, I'll also add in an herb run or two a day, mostly for money purposes, not so much for farming experience purposes, though that farming experience does still add up, so it's worth doing. And I'll definitely want to bring a couple stamina potions along for the trips, because it seems like it takes me about that long of running, and it's definitely worth having. But it should be a really quick early morning routine just to get out of the way for lots of farming experience. All right, just like that through the magic of editing, it's the next morning. So I'm gonna see how fast we can get knocked out one full tree run. And if it wasn't clear from the earlier clip, I am ultra composting these trees, but not paying the fee to have them watched. With low level saplings like this, it's not really worth it to have them watched unless you want absolutely peak experience rewards. But farming is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. So I don't necessarily recommend that. But we're going to go ahead and get started and let's see how long this takes going as fast as I can. Okay, and just like that, we're done. Just over five minutes, and I got seven and a half thousand farming experience, which is effectively double what I started with. I am going to begin using better trees as I can, but I probably won't go too high as the higher level trees get pretty expensive. So, and I don't necessarily need that many farming levels to accomplish the goals of this series. But I will start doing like willows and things as I can. And of course I'm probably going to stop showing the actual tree runs beyond this one, as it's not necessarily worth showing every single one. I'll probably show milestones and that should be good. But this will be farming for today. Tomorrow morning I'll do it all over again. Okay, so now that we've got the tree runs all set up, there's actually one more thing I want to do out of order from the quest guide. And that's actually go ahead and get an Avas Accumulator. But I'm pretty far off the list from actually doing Animal Magnetism because of Slayer. So I'm basically going to jump forward. I'm going to do the quest Wanted for a small Slayer experience reward. And then we'll be able to do Animal Magnetism. So let's get started with Wanted. Now 
that's the end of Wanted, which is a super strange quest. It's really kind of weird to me that the bad guy takes out like a dozen white knights with one ice barrage, and then I just kill him with a bow and arrow. <laughs> super weird. Okay, that's a massive boost to Slayer though, and more than enough to be able to do animal magnetism. So let's do that next. All right, that's the end of Animal Magnetism. And actually, since I was already 50 range, I got awarded with an accumulator instead of a tractor right off the bat. That's pretty nice. This is also the first bit of fletching experience we've gotten, which means that I have leveled up all of my skills past level one. So that's pretty interesting. I feel like the accumulator is such an iconic item, it doesn't need an introduction. But just in case for those who don't know, not only does this go in the cape slot and give a ranging bonus, more importantly, it passively pick up, picks up all of your ammunition from the ground that doesn't break. So it's extremely useful for things like minigames and also AFKing in Nightmare Zone and the like. And with a massive sense of deja vu, here we are again back at the Pest Control Novice Boat. So yeah, I've got a stream coming up tonight and Pest Control seems to be like a good fit. So part of the reason of getting this backpack unlocked was so that I would have it for tonight's stream. If you're interested in joining us, I always stream on Thursday nights after 8 p.m. Central, so definitely come check it out and hang out if you're interested. Also, I've been announcing when these streams happen in our Discord, which I've linked below. If you want to join up and be part of a community there, definitely give that a look. And finally, we've got a small clan chat going under this username, Kamrakuda. If you want a clan chat to talk to in-game, here you go. There it is, heavily requested, now I've made it. All right, so that was absolutely a wonderful time. If you guys didn't get a chance to make it, definitely keep an eye out for the streams on Thursday night. It was so much fun hanging out with everyone. We managed to get a good 40 or 50 pest points, and I'm all the way up to 53, almost 54 ranged from that. It was about two, two and a half hours, so really not too bad. I'll probably stop updating for the streams and pest points until I'm pretty much ready to be done with it or I hit any major level milestones. But all that said, we're actually gonna keep moving our way down the optimal quest guide. The quest guide has us taking a detour to do some easy diaries in order to get some reward lamps for mining. I'm not gonna do that. I'll explain why that is later. I will do the easy diaries eventually, but I wanna put it on runecrafting instead of mining. So that said, we're gonna skip over the easy diaries and move on to A Tale of Two Cats, another long and fascinating quest. Let's get it done. Ah, so now we have to wait 15 to 35 minutes for the potatoes to grow as part of this quest, but I have a plan. We're actually gonna go knock out the feud while we wait for this stage. So we will do that. All right, there's the feud, which is well known as the Knight Sword of Thieving. All the way up to 38 Thieving from, I think I was like 32 from that. Super nice. And hopefully it should be enough time for our potatoes to have grown. Let's go check them out. Yeah, fully grown, so we can continue now. Definitely worth doing something in the meantime rather than just waiting though. All right. Not the most rewarding quest in the world to get done, but definitely nice to get knocked out of the way as it's a little annoying. Go ahead and destroy this stuff from the quest as I don't need it. Now the quest guide recommends that I put these on mining as we need a 40 mining requirement coming up very quickly. But as I said before, I'm not too worried about mining and I'm gonna put these on runecrafting instead. I'll be putting basically every experience reward I get from here and out onto runecrafting as just time-wise it is the most expensive thing to train. All the way up to 40 runecrafting from that. 
which is pretty cool. So next we actually have the Watchtower quest coming up, which has the 40 mining requirement. I would be able to go all the way up to 40 if I did those diaries as well as put the lamps that we just got onto it. But because I didn't do that and I opted for runecrafting instead, we just have to do a little bit of mining. So let's go get that done now. So it is worth noting that I would be able to boost up to 40 for the Watchtower quest using a Dwarven Stout, but I don't really see a reason to do that as I'm going to want 41 ASAP for a Rune Pickaxe anyway. So I'm going to sit here, power mine some iron, we're going to see how long it takes to go from 36 up to 40. And also there's probably fireworks in the background. Happy 4th of July, I guess. Alright, 40 mining out of the way, now we can go ahead and do the Watchtower quest. Let's get it done. So one cool thing about being a main account is your highest level of birdhouse isn't restricted by your crafting level. I no longer have the crafting level to keep up with the highest tier of birdhouse I can do, which is maple. But because I can just buy them directly, I can actually just go ahead and build them anyway to keep up the hunter training. I'll just be able to sell the clockworks again later for a little bit of... Uh, refund on the cost of the birdhouses rather than reusing them every time I want to build them. Now that my farming level is high enough, actually it's been high enough for a while, I just kind of forgot to add this into the routine, I can actually do hardwood trees. And hardwood trees are some of the best farming experience you can get, the downside being of course that they take three days to be ready, but it's definitely worth doing as they're dirt cheap and they give you massive amounts of experience. That's the end of the Watchtower quest. Interestingly enough, you get the magic experience reward before the scroll pops up, which is kind of a weird thing from these old quests. This one's really nice to have done, as I get a lot of magic experience, and now I can also finally teleport to the Watchtower, which is tends to be a little quicker to get to uh, Yanil if the Nightmare Zone teleport is on cooldown. So that will be pretty handy. But with that in mind, we're gonna keep going with the quest guide and move on to In Search of the Marique. Actually, the next few will all be in Mortania, so let's get it done. Alright, nice and easy. I always love these quests. They're actually a lot easier than I remember them back in the day when I was little. It's definitely not as annoying as it was. We're going to move on to Shades of Morton actually next, which is not part of this quest line, but still a nice unlock to have. Some of these teleports from the Zaya spellbook are actually just broken, like Barrow's teleport. It makes it so easy to get down to Morton, which is such a long journey at one point in time. Now made entirely trivial. Well, that was weird. <laughs> I didn't realize how fast that one ended. <laughs> and the quest helper had a little bit of trouble on that quest. It kept getting desynced with the step to uh, sacrifice the oil. But super nice to have that one out of the way. So let's go ahead and move on to an aid of the Marik to keep this quest line going. One small thing that you can do is you can actually bring this diary down to the apothecary, the diary from Shades of Warden, and he will actually give you a small uh, reward of herbal experience that could be worth it. So it's only 335, maybe not worth it to do that on a main account, but I did it anyway since the quest guide recommended it and it helps us get a requirement for a future quest. Alright, there's the end of In Aid of the Marique. Definitely a pretty annoying one. Just a lot of fetching to do, which is never super fun. But glad to have it out of the way. 
Also, the Ephorides Aid, which was added in the Silver Jewelry expansion, is entirely broken for this quest. It makes it so much easier to do the uh, traveling portion with your follower when you have this. Definitely recommend grabbing it if you're a main. But with that said, we're on to Darkness of Hollowvale, which is also annoying in its own right, but not quite the same. <laughs> so as you may have realized, I don't have all of the requirements to start Darkness of Hollowvale. I'm missing the strength requirement, but if I just take a sip of Super Strength Potion, go all the way up to 45 strength, all of a sudden now I can start the quest. <laughs> this is one of the very few quests that actually allows you to boost it to get around a check at the start of the quest. Usually all of the boostable requirements are the ones that only check during the quest. So that's it's, it's pretty interesting. Just, uh, you know, VLAF there would not let me start the quest until I had a swig of my uh, str strong juice and all of a sudden then he was like, oh yeah, you're great. Ooh, there's the end of Darkness of Hollowvale. Definitely a very long quest. So the quest helper has made it trivial to get through the city, which is probably the most annoying part. Definitely glad to have it done. A lot of nice experience rewards from that quest, which is really great. And we also get this Tome of Experience. The optimal quest guide recommends putting this on mining, but as I've explained before, I have other ideas in mind for how we're going to get our mining up. So I'm gonna use all of this on runecrafting. It's 6,000 total experience. And it's definitely worth it because runecrafting is so slow. And all the way up to 41 from that, which is amazing. And thanks to all the running around we had to do, I was able to do a lot of passive elking and got all the way up to 60 magic. So we're actually going to go take a small detour and get one more gear unlocked. That's really fast, but really awesome. And of course, that is to unlock the Mage Training Arena 1 cape, which is always a very fast and very worthwhile thing to unlock. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Incredibly easy. And obviously the cape is wonderful because it gives a massive plus 10 magic attack in defense, which could come in handy later on. I'm also going to go ahead and grab the free staff. Obviously you need to come back and get all three eventually anyway, so getting one free is pretty helpful. Won't be doing Magic Training Arena 2 for a while though. So unfortunately this brings us to yet again the end of another episode of Macro Efficient Main. Definitely made some pretty good progress this episode, however the vast majority of my playtime was pretty limited, so I did a lot of farming more so than much other progress, but we did at least get knocked out a couple of longer quests, up to almost 150 quest points. I think we'll be able to make the push for Barrow's Gloves within the next couple episodes, which is going to be extremely exciting. Quick stop at Hans here shows that it's been just over 14 hours since the last episode. Now I've been spending a lot of time getting extra footage for Time Traveler, so that's not entirely all playtime. In addition to that, I think I had three to four hours of pest control in this episode as well. Generally speaking though, I bet you'll see the playtime go up more and more per episode, as there'll be more to do between episodes. Of course, the Wizards Mind Bomb collection continues to grow. All of the donations have been so incredibly generous. We got some massive ones in last week's stream, so this is incredibly exciting. Thanks so much to everyone who's contributed so far. This is such a fun little side project to watch grow, and I'm excited to see where it continues to go. And of course, we can't end the episode without checking the state of the collection. 430,000 Wizards Mind Bombs. You guys are absolutely ridiculous. This is so many Wizards Mind Bombs. When I set out to make this collection, I had no idea we would hit this, and I especially didn't know we'd hit this this fast. That's absolutely ridiculous. But unfortunately, this will be where I leave you until next time. If you liked the video, definitely like the video. 
leave a subscription on the channel, and check out our live streams as well, which happen on Thursday evenings after 8 p.m. Central. Take care, everyone, and I will see you next time.